So uh, go ahead and let the people know who you are. All right, it's your boy Chuck the Arsonist, man. Um, that's Chuck D A Arsonist. Uh, one of the DMV vets. Been doing this for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Before hip hop was even the thing to do in the DMV. So um, yeah, man, this is this is all I know. This is what I do, and uh, we make good music around right that. You know, so. Right. Okay. So, okay. So tell the people where you from. Um, from the DMV, born and raised. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Um, Maryland. Maryland is where I live. You know, DC, born. Uh, but I've lived in all, all three. DC, Maryland, and VA. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm DMV all the way through. You know. So that's what it is. Okay. So what was your influences in hip hop? Like, what made you? I want to say, hey, I'm going to pick up this mic and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it better than them. Um, you know what? It wasn't even a thing of me wanting to do it better than anybody. Uh, the thing is, I I saw Rakim. Like, I saw I saw other songs before Rakim, other videos before Rakim and all that shit. But um, when Rakim came out with... I ain't no joke. It was just plain, uncut, and raw. And he was, he was a street dude. He had problems. It, it wasn't all, it wasn't all playful. And there wasn't no beatboxing. And it wasn't none of that shit. It was just like straight, uncut, uncut raw hip hop. And um, and he was doing that shit in, on, on the street with the public and the way that people was like reacting to that shit. And I was like, damn. That's what I wanted to do, you know what I'm saying? Because the, the lyrics were just bar for bar nasty. And um, at the time, I didn't know that nigga was gonna be like the God MC, you know what I'm saying? Uh, one of the one of the goats of the shit, but I just knew like the nigga was raw, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and then, you know, you had other songs like, uh, what's the joint, Paid in Full, and um and the other joint was um was the symphony with like Melly Mel and, and no, it was a uh, Molly Ma, that's his name. Molly Ma, Big Daddy Kane, uh Kooji Rap, Craig G. Uh and after that I was like, yo, I gotta I gotta be just as nasty as them niggas, you know what I'm saying? So uh, when it came time for me to, you know, like learn this shit, I would write down uh, I would write down they lyrics to the song just so I could learn that shit and then I would say I would rhyme they shit you know what I'm saying and then after that I was just like you know what I could do this shit myself but I started I started filling in uh, my own bars where their bars were and then yeah that was it from there okay. Yeah. okay so one thing you know what I'm saying I like about you as an artist is you got solid lyrics and your performance match your delivery on the track. How how important is is that to you? Um, to me, that's that's real important. You know, what I, mean? I mean, it's a different era now because you ain't really gotta say shit because it's, it's really about the production right now. You know what I'm saying? You can write a song called "Shit on a Stick" and make that motherfucker, you know. Something banging, you know what I'm saying? If the production is right, I mean, fuck, the nigga just came out with peekaboo, 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 peekaboo. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, I mean, it and it wasn't, it wasn't the niggas had bars. It was just the production, you know what I'm saying? And, and um, the thing is, like I said, I just come from a different, different era, man. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, if you was, if you were still in a nigga style back in the day, you sounded like another nigga. Your ass was biting. You know what I'm saying? And niggas wasn't fucking with you at all because they knew that your ass was biting. You know what I'm saying? Um, now that shit is acceptable. You know, like you sound like the next nigga, and everybody like you because you sound like the next nigga. You know? Um, and right now. Niggas is just, niggas is just doing their own thing. Niggas is performing and standing still and not putting any energy for 
you know, to the forefront with the lyrics to match the fucking shit. And it just don't look right. I can't do that. If I get on that stage, I got to give you pure fucking energy to the point where I'm, I'm winded to the point where my fucking body hurt at the end of the night. Like my thigh muscles be, be like cramping up because I'm jumping up and down and bouncing so fucking much, man. The crowd will never know that shit. But yeah, that's, you know what I'm saying? I just have to put forth full fucking energy into everything that I do. I want you to feel the lyrics like I feel the lyrics. And if I don't put that fucking energy through, and it's just gonna look lame, you know? I mean, another person who does that shit, Busta Rhymes. Busta Rhymes, he just put through like full fucking energy. He gonna make sure that you feel every fucking, every fucking bar did, you know? He does doing that show, and that's how I, I look at that shit. Okay, okay. So let's get into your music since we are uh, talking about your performance and your yes, lyrics. Sir, yes, sir. Um, you recently dropped a video called Life. Tell us about that real quick. Um, life. Life is kind of self-explanatory. I mean, you know, life was about uh, relationships. Um, it was produced by my man. Uh, my man Glenn Jones, you know what I'm saying? We call him GM Mastermind here in the DMV. But um Yeah, so he, he gave me this track or whatever. And uh, I sat on the track for a little bit. And then uh, I just let the track talk to me and it just told this story of, of relationship fucked up marriage, you know. Um where the the dude was doing all that he could. But, you know, he still had a fucked up wife who didn't support him, you know, um, as far as with his, with his music, you know, with his business or whatever. And um, I know everybody going through situations like that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they out here grinding, whether it's male or female, you know, they out here grinding and they, they have goals of their own, but the spouse doesn't support them, mainly because it, they're not invested into it. And, um, you know, so they want you to quit and stop your own dreams and shit. And so that's how I, I looked at it, you know, when I wrote it, I just let the track talk to me and that's that's what I put on it. Um, so the first verse is, is the dude basically, um, the dude basically busting his ass for his kids and, and um, you know what I'm saying, he didn't, he's done it all, he's given it all, you know, uh, to make the family a whole, you know, but um, he doesn't have the support from the family, you know what I'm saying, and he's fucked up behind him. The second verse goes a little deeper to say, you know, well, yeah, I done, I done done all that I could do, you know what I'm saying, and I done forgave you for all the wrong shit that you done done, you done fucked all my friends, you know what I'm saying, or you done fucked a few of my friends, and you know, um, I didn't try to save the marriage, save the relationship, but at this point, I can't do no more. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm basically done. I know that we over, you know, but don't keep me away from my kids. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, that's that's basically it. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, in the video, if you watch the video, it matches that to a T. You know, the way you see me struggling with my wife, you see the the pictures of my family, you see me getting offered a record deal and me calling her to let her know how um, happy I am and her not being supportive, you know what I'm saying, and just wanting me to wanting me to stop, you know. Um, so yeah, that's that's what it boils down to. We tell him catch the wave. We tell him catch the wave. We tell him catch the wave.